but thank you for logging in tonight uh, with us at Proctor Academy. Um, my name is Hunter Churchill, and I am an alumni of Proctor from 2001, and uh, have been working in the admissions office now for 13 years, and hung my hat in a lot of places, and currently have a 10th grader, a daughter who's at Proctor, and three other kids uh, in line to potentially come to this school as well. Um, so I'm I'm working it, I'm living it, uh, and definitely feeling it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but thank you for being here. Uh, we are going to be having um, a series of these events to dive deep into um, kind of all, all different topics of Proctor. And the best part about it is having students with us um, who will be unscripted and available for you to ask questions. Um, so I will start to, you know, basically give an overview of Proctor, um, take some time to just explain kind of who we are. Um, and I'm already getting distracted. <laughs> uh, sounds like, can people hear me? Maybe a thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Um, but basically I'll give an overview and then we're going to open it up to questions. So ideally we'll have, uh, you know, participants enter questions into the chat box um, and uh, and we'll kind of take it from there. Um, just so everyone knows this uh, is being recorded. So um, you also will be able to follow up and watch it or share it um, with anyone you'd like. Uh, and it should be on our website tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Can you guys see that? We good? Yeah. Um, so Proctor Academy, we're located in uh, in Andover, New Hampshire. So probably about an hour and forty five to two hours from Boston. And as you can see, we we are a little village. Um, we do sit on twenty five hundred acres of land, and that's going to include you know all of our buildings and playing fields, um, and of course trails. We have 17 miles of trails for mountain biking and hiking. We've got lakes and rivers um, for exploring and classroom um, hands-on. But uh, but really, um, what I want to kind of start with is, is why boarding school, right? And, you know, at the center of a Proctor experience is, is the student, right? And you've got your family in your corner um, and uh, an advisor. And so, you know, in boarding schools, an advisor is Kind of your go-to person um and so really that core is then supported by everything the school does from you know student life to um you know to boarding to your faculty and coaches and um the health services and wellness teams and and all that is really what makes proctor um you know a family school um and you know, with all those buildings in the village you saw, um, there's a lot of different ways that we become, you know, really a tight knit community and really family orientated. And it, it really starts with the dorm sizes, right? And having an average dorm size of 12 and 21 total dorms um, is definitely a way that we get there. And, you know, with the, with the advisory groups being smaller as well, you know, six to seven kids in an advisory group, meeting for all school assemblies, um, you know, three days a week. There's just a lot of connection points for students um, in this community. And of course we have fun too, right? So as a boarder, you're gonna be in a boarding school right through the week, through the weekends. Um, and there's a lot going on. Um, and it's, it's definitely a priority in schools, right? To just keep kids busy and, and provide a lot of action, right? And I'm sharing a lot of this with you because I want you to just keep thinking about questions that you can ask um, our students <laughs> when I finish. Um, but the big question is, right, is, is Proctor's model. And you could say, you know, we're we're the most rigorous of the supportive schools or the most supportive of the rigorous schools out there. Um, but it is a college preparatory school and, you know, there is a core curriculum, but what really makes Proctor special is the learning that happens, uh, really the act of learning through our experiential programs, um, our off-campus programs. Um, and, you know, as a school of 380, 382 right now, um, co-ed, we have 140 different classes offered. So really a lot of variety, a lot of ways that we can meet students as an individual 
and um, and really provide them this this experience where they're they're the drivers, right? Um, they're still learning, they're still in high school, but they can really make it their own. And just an example, you know, in the science department, right? You most kids are gonna pretty much all kids are gonna need biology to graduate, um, and then from there, there's a long list of electives. Um, so, you know, as a student with your advisor, with your people in your corner at the school, um, you can have the ability to. Uh, to choose what you want to do, right? The content um, and the skills, you know, everything we're teaching you to get you ready for Beyond Proctor um, is coming out of those classes as well. And then uh, Proctor also takes it a step further um, when we get into what we call academic concentrations. And, and this is really a way to look beyond APs, honors classes, um, and just to further put this experience into the hands of our kids, right? Um, give them an opportunity to take something that they're really passionate about or a strong interest academically um, and to do some independent work. And so, you know, through this academic concentration program, um, you pair up with a sponsor uh, and you do, you kind of go above and beyond um, more things that you could ask some of our students if, if they're taking a part of it. Um, and we're also a school that offers learning skills. And, you know, this is a program um, that has been at Proctor for a really long time. And it's part of the growth and part of the experiential piece to this school and the, you know, the access to electives. Um, and it's really under the basis that we understand that there's a lot of different types of learners out there, a lot of different types of learners um, who really excel in certain areas and then other areas might need um, that additional help, that additional skill building. And this is a tutorial program. Um, we have three levels. So there's a, a full learning skills, which is essentially a one-on-one -on -one, um, program uh, with a learning specialist. And then we have a learning skills independent, which is the time when kids might start moving out of learning skills. Uh, and then we have a learning lab, which is a classroom um, that will have like eight, eight or nine kids in the classroom with multiple learning specialists. So there is different levels. Um, and I should note that this is really a part of the day. Um, within our seven block schedule, a student in learning skills is meeting with that teacher during a block. Um, no stigma attached, no remediation. They're doing the work, um, but they have that, that person in their corner that specifically works on the skills that, that, that they need to be successful. Um, also built in the Proctor is the arts and arts at Proctor are industrial, they're visual, they're performing. Um, there's certainly some tech art in the mix as well. Um, it's a big part of the experience for our kids. Um, we go back, um, but it uh, it is also built into our schedule and there's choice. So if a student wants to work in a metal shop or build a boat or be involved in dance or music, um, these are all things that, you know, count towards an art credit and are just a part of our kids' everyday life at, at this school. Um, the big one out there too, super unique, um, is our off-campus programs. And, you know, Proctor's off-campus programs, we didn't just uh, invent them overnight. <laughs> They've been along for a, a very long time. Um, so, you know, when you look at some of these programs up here, you can see Mountain Classroom started in 1973. Um, and, and so it's deeply rooted in what we do. And it's important to know that there's Proctor um, faculty and the curriculum is all built um, through Proctor. So it's a part of our electives. It's a part of what we do. Um, and I'm just, I'm gonna kind of buzz through it a little bit quick, um, but you can definitely ask questions about these programs to our students and know that we're gonna have a whole session just solely devoted um, to these off-campus programs, um, but, we do send kids on Ocean Classroom, which is two and a half months at sea. Um, these kids are taking uh, classes in expedition skills and, um, you know, basically oceanography, um, navigational math, like living, breathing on the ocean, um, crew on a ship, and for two and a half months, <laughs> kind of a, a life changer. Um, We've got kids that are traveling across the country from New Hampshire to California, um, you know, taking classes all along the way, uh, you know, really focusing in on, you know, human geography as they head across the country and the ecology of the places they go. We've got a European art classroom that 
is going to represent, you know, just the arts in general at Proctor, um, but with a language component um, being in France. So these kids are based out of Aix-en-Provence, and they're basically traveling and shopping in the local markets and studying art and art history and European cultures. Um, again, two and a half months. Um, the next program is Segovia, Spain. Um, that's not Bernie Sanders down in the right-hand corner. That's just some Spanish guy. Kids won't get that, but the parents might. Um, but it, it's you know a program that's been around since uh, since nineteen, I think seventy one or seventy three. And you know students live with home state families. They get a full year's worth of language credit in one trimester because it's an immersion. Um, but you're you kind of look beyond just being a tourist, right? And you're you're living um, in that in that country. Um, and then we have a program for sophomores. So all those previous programs are for juniors and seniors, but this program um, in Costa Rica is for sophomores, smaller group of kids, but full immersion as well. Um, and you get a full year's worth of language credit. You're studying in the rainforest. Um, you know, it's a uh, it's kind of for the more adventurous. And I think it sets up kids uh, who decide to do a program like this at Proctor for for more off campus programs as well. And uh, I think I'm doing all right with time. I don't want to rush it too much, but then you look at athletics and this slide is actually a little bit inaccurate. It's, it's really afternoon program. Um, and, you know, Proctor is going to compete in uh, the NEPSAC in a, a wide range of sports. And, you know, as a student sitting at home and watching this right now, I'm sure you have some really strong interests and, and some desires to play sport at a high level. And, Proctor certainly is the school that can get you there, um, but we also do more. Um, when we look at our afternoon programming, kids have the opportunity to play those sports that they're passionate about or have that strong interest, but then also ski and rock climb and do dance and theater um, and kind of collectively, again, choose your path and what you're interested in, and that can change, um, and that's totally all right. Um, but we're also very fortunate to have, you know, an incredible workout facility and gym where, you know, kids can work outside of practice times and school time um, to get stronger, faster, right? Um, we also have an outdoor center that is solely devoted to all of our outdoor sports with a rock climbing wall and, you know, mountain biking and skiing um, with shops and, you know, opportunities for kids to be fixing skis and bikes and um, really have their hands in it all. Um, you know, we own an operator owned ski hill that has lights and snowmaking with colleges and universities training on our own hill with our students. Um, it, it, incredible resource um, for those kids that that want to be on snow. Um, but just to kind of like pull it all back together, you know, the Proctor experience um, is, is just going to incorporate, you know, more than just a school, right? You've got community, um, you've got the programming, you've got interests where kids are involved in athletics and sports and arts. Um, you've got that academics right at the core, um, the relationships. And, you know, there's so much going on in a community like this, but it's really possible because of the people. Um, there's a lot of really good people here. A lot, of, a lot of faculty that have been with us for a long time, a lot of faculty that understand what we do. Um, and it really is a, an influential place for kids um, to be going through these pivotal years. Um, and of course, we think about the outcome, right, always, but it's not all about this, right? Um, our kids are successful. They are doing wonderful things. They are learning about themselves. But, um, you know, we have to kind of look beyond that, right, because every single one of you has a really good idea of who you are right now and what you're looking for in a school, or maybe you're discovering that. Um, but I'll tell you, like it's high school and you're going to change <laughs> um, And a school like Proctor is the kind of place that is going to expand who you are um, through so many different ways. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea of who we are, um, also gives you some ideas on good questions to ask. Um, but I'm going to let our students now introduce themselves. So Rowan, you, you got the stage. All right. Hi, I'm Ron Goswami. I'm a three-year senior from Florence, Massachusetts. Um, and in my time here, I have done mountain biking, alpine skiing, and cycling. I have also gone on European art classroom, and I'm also one of this year's student leaders. So, yeah. 
I'm Lyle. I'm from Talking, Alaska. I'm a four-year senior here at Proctor. Um, I've been involved with mountain biking and theater for the past four years here. I've been on um, Proctor in Costa Rica. I've been on the Rosebud Summer Service Program, Proctor in Spain, and I'll be on Proctor's European Art History this spring. And I'm also involved in um, an academic concentration, if anyone has questions about that. Hi guys, I'm uh, Patrick Moore. I'm a three-year junior from Burlingame, California. Um, my three years I've played football, basketball, and baseball. Um, this winter I'm going on Mountain Classroom, and right now I'm building the canoe. Hi guys, I'm Jane Bartlett. Um, I'm from Elkins, New Hampshire, about 15 minutes away. Um, I am a three-year junior. I am captain of the field hockey team. I'm on the FIS ski team. And normally I would be playing lacrosse in the spring, but this spring I'm super happy to say I'm going to Spain. I'm Thomas Berger. I'm a three-year junior from Sunapee, New Hampshire. I play on the boys varsity soccer team, JV basketball, and then uh, varsity tennis. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Morgan Hartnibrig. I'm a three-year junior from Winchester, Massachusetts. I play varsity soccer. Um, I was an alpine ski racer my freshman year. My sophomore year, I went to Costa Rica. And I also play JV lacrosse. And this winter, I'm going to Spain. All right, awesome. Um, so this is, um, this is where we need the audience. <laughs> Those of you at home to step up and ask some questions. Um, I do have one started, but it looks like uh, I haven't seen many come in yet. So start thinking about questions, ask them, um, and I'll kind of kick things off. Um, I think uh, for a lot of the families at home, just the idea of choosing a school, maybe when looking at multiple schools, uh, certainly can be a little daunting. So I didn't know if maybe you guys could share a little bit about your journey through the admissions process um, and, and ultimately maybe why you chose Proctor. And I'll just open it up to anyone. Yeah, well, I can start. Oh, sorry, Lyle. Um, I um, didn't know if I wanted to go to boarding school or not. So I applied to, I think, five schools, Proctor, New Hampton, Cushing Academy, Governor's Academy, and um, Lawrence Academy. And I live in Winchester, Massachusetts. So um, most of them were either I was definitely boarding or I was going to do like a 45-minute drive to school every day. And I went to the Carroll School, which is a private school in Lincoln, Massachusetts. And um, they were really supportive there. And it's it's kind of just like understanding what you want as a person and um, digging deeper into the school and understanding what they can fulfill for you. And then the reason why I ultimately chose Proctor out of all of the schools I applied to was mainly their off-campus programs and their learning skills program. And I am involved in the learning skills program and it has helped me tremendously throughout my three years at Proctor. And it is definitely helped me as a student. And yeah. Yeah, and I'd love to hear more stories. So, like anyone else who wants to answer this, oh, I can I can talk about my experience going to Proctor. I think um, it was a little different. I, a lot of reasons, but I was the youngest youngest kid, the youngest sibling, so I wanted to get away. I didn't want to be home with my parents, which is probably relatable to a lot of you looking at boarding school. And I came in um, super interested in like uh, learning skills, so that was a huge part. And now I'm not in learning skills at all, so that was kind of an adjustment coming out of it and I didn't know that would be what I wanted to do but then um it all kind of worked out and I also I loved um the industrial arts so like like woodworking and metal engineering that was a huge 
draw for me to come into Proctor and then sports. So. Um, I can go next. I originally never planned to go back into private education. I started out at Eagle Brook School in Deerfield. And my plan was always to return to Northampton High School, which was our public high school. But um, Eagle Brook had a secondary school, um, you know, application program. So I went through that, I applied to a few schools. And um, like Morgan said, I think the off-campus programs are something that's you know, really special to Proctor. No, no other schools I looked at had anything like that. Um, also, the sports and the arts. I love ceramics, so I have an awesome studio here. But definitely the off-campus programs were my main interest when I chose the school. So, Yeah, and so I, I might um, kind of shift a little bit because there was a few questions that came in um, just about learning skills and maybe one of you or two of you could share uh, if you're in learning skills um, like what that program is like um, and maybe kind of how it how it's been working with you and then maybe also just share a little bit about like if you were to move into learning skills independence um, what that might look like uh, Um, I started learning skills freshman year and you get paired with a learning skills um, teacher and most of the time they stay with you throughout your whole time at Proctor unless some weird like mishap happens or they're not the right fit for you you can change to someone else but um, the whole idea as Hunter said is to slowly progress into more as an independent learner and right now I just started learning, learning skills independence for the first term. And right now I'm going, so instead of going like four times a week, I'm going two times a week. And the other two times I have a free block where I'm going back and I'm studying on my own and I'm being more independent, but the, um, in just regular learning skills, it's a, you go in to, it's like a normal day, like a normal block and you go in and my learning skills teacher, she, goes through my week with me. She tells me, or she helps me like pick out if I have a test and I need to take it in learning skills. She helps me be on top of my work, makes me more organized and to be the best learner I can be at the time. Does this one apply to anyone else? No. Um, um, I guess it kind of applies to me. I, I've learned okay. skills freshman year and then the first fall term of sophomore year, I did the same as Morgan independent and it, I phased out of it totally. So. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, like Morgan, like, have you, um, have you continued that relationship with your specialist, even though you're not like in it as much or like, do you still um, feel like you can go in there for a little bit of help here and there? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely feel like I could, I haven't, but I definitely know that there's still that support there if I need it and I can always hop back into it if that's what I need. Um, no, that's great. Um, and then, uh, and then there were some questions about just like the average day at Proctor, like what does the day to day look like? Um, and I think you guys could probably play off this question. Like someone could start and, um, let it kind of keep running. And with those questions, there was also a question about dress code, right? So maybe you can kind of incorporate that in as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, you know, as a as a um, student here, we our classes normally start around eight fifteen in the morning. Breakfast is from seven thirty to eight fifteen up until classes, and then we have our classes from eight fifteen to about three ten on um, Mondays, Tuesdays, and then Thursdays and Fridays, and then on Saturdays and Wednesdays, you know, game day or. Um, whatever that might be for you, our classes will end earlier, about midday, so we can prioritize our afternoon programs. Um, and if anyone wants to pick up afternoon programs. Uh, I can go and I'll finish off these borders so it might look a little different. So uh, afternoon programs, I was doing what I did today. We had football practice and then I went to dinner and then um, Dinner starts from 5.15 to 6.15, and it kind of cycles through whatever sport you're playing. And then from 6.15 to 7.30, typically you have free time. 
or really for whenever you finish dinner. And then at 7.30 is our study hall from 7.30 to 9.30. So day students can go to the library or they can go home and boarders can go to their dorm or the library. And then from 9.30 to 10.30, you have in dorm time. And that's when you're kind of hanging out with your friends in the dorm. That's what I always think of boarding school. That's like the, the time I think of when you're hanging out in the dorm. And that's what's so special about, I mean, you're at this age and that's, kind of your living circumstance. And I think that you can't really experience that a lot when you're in high school and you only really can when you're boarding school. And then you, I go to bed at like 11, I think probably you guys can agree, 11, 10, 30. And as for- Yeah, the, I can- Go you know. for it. Dress code. <laughs> it's, um, I, I can't remember the specifics, but isn't it like um, just- not a bikini, but we have a really um, loose dress code here, which is really nice, and we can express ourselves in all sorts of ways. So, <laughs> you know, I'm a day student, so usually during the school week after practice or dinner, I'll like if I have a lot of work, I'll usually go home. But if not, uh, the wise, it's uh, like this area where kids like to hang out, a lot of pool going on. That's a good activity for, you know, if you don't have any work. But I'd say. The, the library is a good place for after um, dinner to get work done. Um, yeah. I would say the turf is pretty popular too. You know, after dinner, everyone will head to the turf or as Thomas said, the wise, there's air hockey, um, food, really good hanging out, social space. Um, a lot of hanging out outside right now just because the weather is so awesome. I think Proctor's really good at like giving you a schedule, especially for teenagers like us. It's it keeps us organized and keeps us like settled. So for the school day, like Jane and Patrick said, we have like a nice schedule set for us, but we also do have like free time where we can be by ourselves if we want or go with our friends. And um, as Patrick was saying, from like six fifteen or whatever you finish dinner, whenever you get let out of your afternoon activity to seven thirty. That is your time that you can hang out with your friends and you can do whatever you want. You can go back to your dorm, you can go home, you can go to the library, you can study, or you can just hang out with all of your friends. And I think Proctor does a really good job at balancing your social life with your friends and your academic life. Yeah, and I also think um, we should mention that uh, you don't have study hall at 7.30 every day. So Fridays, they push it back to 8.30. You get a little more free time and no study hall on Saturday. That's when most of the weekend events go on and um, most of the games happen the, uh, Saturday too, along with Wednesday. Um, and Sunday is pretty much your day off. Um, you do have study hall starting at 7.30 on Sunday though. So. Um, and I can so, talk about like- Yeah, go ahead. Um, I can tell you about like Saturday, like people will, Say, oh, no, you have school on Saturday, but it's like the most chill two classes. There's not much work. Um, and after that, you have like lunch and then you go to your sports game, which is which is super fun. And like if it's an away game, you'll like bond with your team on the bus. You'll get um, pizza or food uh, and then you'll come back and it will be, I think, 1030 in dorm time. So you can usually in the fall because it's nice weather. Everyone hangs out on the turf. Wise, like I said, uh, but sometimes we have like school dances, which brings everyone together which I think is a, is a big part of the reason why a lot of kids like to stay on campus because of the dances we have, um, because of the people, uh, the music that's happening all on the turf on those uh, fun Saturday nights. Yeah, maybe a couple more of you could share like your favorite thing that you've done on a Proctor weekend, right? Just to give them an idea of like what, what kind of happens. A cool Ooh. thing to have. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> you go, you go. We have um the coffee house on weekends i think fridays and saturdays and that's a really fun place to hang out especially if you're looking for more of a chill kind of vibe you've got that game with i don't know what it's called but there's like a little hoop on a string tiki little, toss what is it called tiki toss tiki toss love tiki toss mm. i'm terrible at it but um yeah, and we um, there's coffee that you can buy there if you're looking to drink coffee at seven thirty at night. Jenga <laughs> um, and stuff. It's it's so ping fun. Pong. That's where I like to hang out. Ping pong. Yeah, it's awesome. 
uh, usually on like the weekends, there'll be like off campus opportunities. Like I know last year there was a trip to go bowling. So I went, we went bowling with a bunch of uh, friends and that was a great night. Like we went, the bus took us to Concord to bowling alley and we all bowled, got food, came back and uh, had like an hour or two to hang out on the turf before uh, in dorm time. So that was one of the more memorable Saturday nights that I've had. And there's many more different like off campus trips that they do on the weekends, especially for boarders, because they don't get the chance to go out off campus too much. So I think if you're a boarder, I'd take advantage of the off like the campus trips that you you can uh, go on. Yeah, and um, like uh, two two weeks ago, sorry, Maria, we played capture the flag. I thought I should bring that up, and that was super. I was going to say that too. All, all the grades grouped together, and it's just freshmen versus sophomores with juniors and seniors. So it was great. I think that is probably one of the best Saturdays I've had. I I think also so last winter I boarded. And sometimes as a dorm, you can go out to like, you go a McDonald's trip and you can go as a dorm, like um, bond together. And I think that's a lot of fun after study hall. If it was a long, hard day of classes or work, you can uh, all go to get food, take a trip uh, with your dorm parent or dorm leader and all the kids in your dorm, which was super fun. And I was really grateful to have that opportunity. Um, as a boarder, it, Honestly, it's so nice to have a relaxing Sunday too, even after like a full week of school, just like getting to sleep in and do whatever you want on Sundays. And um, me and some people in my dorm started like a little tradition kind of thing. Like every Sunday morning, we would sign up for the Tucker's trip and Tucker's is a little brunch place in New London. And the school would take us there and we would go, we would just have like a relaxing brunch. And it's honestly such a nice way, like to get off campus and like have just like a different meal too, you know, and there's like a Dunkin' Donuts right next door and you can go to like grocery shopping. So I, I just like love the relaxing Sundays too. And we've, um we've gotten a few like direct questions about like afternoon program um, and sport and activity. But before we leave this residential life, I would love to hear from like some of the boarders about like who checks you in at night? Who's the person that's taking care of you? And maybe just share a little bit about that experience. Yeah, I can speak to that. So every dorm has their designated dorm parents who live in the dorm in the faculty apartments. Um, but we also have surrogates who come in to, you know, take that responsibility off the dorm parents' shoulders. Um, and they're also dorm leaders. I'm one of them in carriage along with Morgan. Um, and sometimes um, whichever adult is on duty that night may ask us to, you know, go check everyone in. But um, every night you check in with whoever's on duty um, face to face so they know you're actually there. Yeah. And anyone else like go deeper? Like, do you have pets um, in the around? Do you have kids? Like what's, <laughs> what's it like? Yeah, I, I can talk about it. I mean, um, I lived in the same dorm for two years. So that relationship with the dorm parent is really, I think, unique and special. And he has kids and I got to kind of grow up as they grew up and that was cool. And then you have surrogates. And I think the connection you make with your dorm parent is sweet and it can be a real, really important and someone that you go to and you trust. Yeah, whenever there's like a birthday or something in the dorm, like everyone gets together. We have like a little like dorm group up and usually like the dorm parent or dorm surrogate will make some kind of treat. Um, also, sometimes randomly, like my dorm surrogate this past Saturday made us this like really fancy, nice bread. And we were all like super excited. And she was like, it was so nice. Um, and so sort of that kind of thing. And they also are, you know, open to helping you with um schoolwork if you need it um my dorm surrogate is a learning skills teacher and she and most of the kids in our dorm are seniors so she offered f to read any of our college essays which was really nice so we do have a really tight connection with all the people who are involved in the dorm and it's really nice feels like family for sure and lyle um what are the dorms like are there freshmen sophomore junior seniors in the dorms are there all freshmen, like maybe you can answer that too quickly. Yeah, um, all of our dorms are mixed up. 
there's definitely some dorms coming in where, um, you know, you've been here for three years, you sort of know, like, what you're more interested in, and, you know, what dorms, you know, this one's close for the dining hall, so I'm definitely going to try to apply to get there, and stuff like that, and it's a lottery system, so um, you never can be totally sure, but all of our dorms are really nice, um, they're all really small size, which is super awesome, and there's no dorm that just has all seniors, all juniors, all sophomores, or all freshmen, so um, you're going to make friends and have a close connection with all sorts of students. So that's really nice. And yeah, uh, last I, question. Um, I agree with Lyle completely. Like me and Rowan are in a co-ed dorm right now. There's one co-ed dorm on campus and it is an all gender dorm. So anyone can live there, any gender. And um, it's an application instead of the lottery and you have to apply to get in there. And um, now the new um, dorm faculty member, Morgan Solite, will go over the application with the dorm parents and put you, and if you get a spot in there, it's just like any other dorm, same rules. And it's just a great way to make everyone feel very included. Yeah, that's great. Um, and I'm going to, so from that, I'm going to shift a little bit and go to Jane. So Jane, there was a question about like, how do you do the work <laughs> at Proctor if you're training for USSA FIS? Like, what does that look like? And maybe you can just like share a little bit about that. Um, and then there's a few more questions about other afternoon sports. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, I definitely saw a few of those. So um, as a FIS skier, obviously, the workload and the ski load is very heavy. We're super duper fortunate to have a ski hill about a three, two minute, two minute van ride in a blizzard um, away. Or like, even if you, if, if you had to walk, which we never really do, it's like five minute walk. Anyways, um, we're super lucky to have that facility like right in our backyard. And then Ragged Mountain is also just right up and over the hill. We're 20 minutes away. We're not like other boarding schools where you might have to be traveling 45 minutes away to get to um, really awesome training facilities. Um, our coaches are encouraging us when we're um, going away for those four day fist race weekends. We're um, doing work in the van. They um, here at Proctor, I know for like any sport, you can your life can get really busy, but it's, you know, student athlete, you want to put your academics first and coaches know that. And so um, like along with academics, you and your teachers and you and your coaches have super like tight knit connections that will um, help help with that reaching your goal of um, getting that grade or turning that paper in or, you know, placing this high in a ski race or, you know, getting like, I, I know I was, I had to do a paper last year, just for an example. Um, I was struggling a little bit and my awesome coach Craig offered to tune my skis for me. And that was probably like the nicest, like, thing at the moment I was like thank you so much Craig you know and it really helped me get to my academic goal um but yeah yeah thanks Jane um and then there was a question about mountain biking I know a couple of you um have been on the mountain bike team I think Lyle and um, maybe Rowan but maybe you guys can just talk about like what that experience is like yeah so I'll start off so I started mountain biking seventh grade at Eagle Brook so I just continued on when I got here at Proctor um, but saying that it doesn't mean you have to have experience to join that team or really any teams for that matter. Of course, there's try, um, tryouts, but, um, you know, you can be brand new to a sport and, you know, they accommodate that. Like we have three kind of riding group or four, actually, we have the fast group, the faster group, the fastest group and the fastestest group. Um, so they kind of place you where they think you fit in speed wise, um, yeah, the races are really chill, really fun. Um, team is also really great. So, well, if you want to add anything. I came in never having mountain biked before. <laughs> and I didn't have a mountain bike either. So I was kind of doing it on a whim because my dorm parent was the coach. And he said that the team's amazing and mountain biking is the best. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to try something new. 
and um yeah it was really fun they had a few extra bikes and I used one and it was um really really fun getting into it and um I never really considered myself to be a super athletic person but I really really found um my passion with mountain biking and um after four years I had my own bike I really got into the groove of it and got to know all the coaches really well and all the kids in our team. So uh, it's an amazing, amazing team. And we um, do all sorts of adventure rides all the time, along with training for our races and stuff. So we go to waterfalls, we go to different parks and different areas. Um, yeah, it's great. And it's really good to get your mind off of school for a few hours, just bike, it's awesome. No, that's perfect. And then um, to kind of follow up with these outdoor sports, um, I know a few of you ski, but maybe not on the fist team. Um, but I'd love to maybe see if someone can explain like what that is like if you're not, you know, the highest level skier or in that group um, and the different options, including like, you know, freestyle ski. Um, and I'm going to let you think about it for a second. And this is just a quick plug um, for the families at home. But in the admissions process, um, when you book a visit to Proctor, we want to know your interests and we want to know, um, you know, if you want to meet a coach, meet a program head um, so that when you're on campus, we can like give you as much information as possible as well um, and really connect you with the people um, that are making it so special at our school. So just know that when you do um, reach out, if you're going to visit, um, that that can be part of your visit. Um, so, yeah, I'll let you guys take it away with the ski question. Yeah, so um, I've skied my whole life and never ski raced, but last winter I joined the Alpine team. It's different than the fist team, um, more relaxed. Um, you still compete and everything, but, um, you know, it's a lot more relaxed. Um, you know, the coaches, like I've never, you know, punched through gates before and they like taught me all that, um, taught me how to tune skis. Um, and there's also a recreational uh, ski and snowboard team where you go to ragged every day for free skiing um and then there's also the freestyle team where um competitive snowboard and freestyle skiing you go um do tricks and you know get scores on that um so you have a lot of options if you want to be on the slopes yep and then again i i know that someone was really interested in the freestyle program and that can be something um that we can tie you in through the admissions process just to like dive deep um so there's also uh there was a question about crew and i don't know if anyone in this group has rode crew has has anyone here rode crew can any of you really speak to it um i have a f oh lyle did you want to go i have a few friends on the crew team um and I know that they um, work really hard. They have some really awesome coaches, but um, they'll take um, their boats and they'll launch in uh, Lake Sunapee, which is about a short, like 25 minute drive away. Um, and they'll get to um, row on a really beautiful, it's a long lake. So, you know, you can go really far. Um, and then when they're not doing that, we have some really awesome facilities to practice the, you know, the motion of erging, we have ergs. And um, I know some uh, competitors are some really strong competitors. And then I just saw a question in the chat. I forgot to mention, we do have Nordic skiing and uh, yeah, you are pretty much guaranteed a spot if you have a competitive background in Nordic. That team's also really great too. And then um, there was a, a quick question about food and we didn't go there yet, but who wants to talk about food? What's that look like? I'll talk about food. Um, we have, uh, I always thought breakfast was our best meal here at Proctor. I don't know. I go to breakfast every day. I know a lot of students don't. Um, I think breakfast, I don't know, classic eggs, uh, ham, bacon, occasionally, you always know, cereal is an option. Um, lunch is always something different and we have a, um, sandwich bar. So you, I have a sandwich almost every day, which is good. I don't get sick of it. And then dinner is, um, always different. Like tonight it was tacos and it was great tonight, but, uh, it, it I don't know. It depends what kind of food you like and, um, 
how picky of an eater you are, but I think when you kind of really think about it, the food here is, is good. It's very good. Yeah. Also, there's so many options, even if you are a picky eater. Like I came in thinking I was like the pickiest eater ever. Like it was so funny. But then there's always a salad bar. Cereal is always open. Um, during lunch, there's a soup station and um, you get the menu sent out to you every morning. So you can see like from like when you wake up, you can see like what you're going to have for lunch or you're going to have for dinner. And there's always so many options. And even if you are a picky eater, you will definitely find something like even if it's just from the salad bar or the soup of the day or just picking through just like the potatoes or the chicken in the hot meal line. It's you'll always find something. And it's all like basically always really, really good. And our staff tries super, super hard and to like separate the meals out and make it different for us. And I just saw that um, comment about celiac too. I have a good friend here who has celiac disease and um, there are plenty of options, plenty of gluten-free options. And um, the dining services will also, they'll also have sometimes um, if there's like a pasta or something in the hot food line, they have um, gluten-free pasta that they can bring out for you if you're gluten-free or have other um, specific allergies like that. And, you know, you don't want to eat a salad every day or something like that. So there's plenty of options. Um, and I'm going to jump in real quick because I want to go back to a question that came in earlier that we just haven't touched on, but um, it was it was really about the transition to Proctor. And I'm at, it was there was also another question about like, is anyone a first time person in their family going to a boarding school. And so maybe whoever is a first timer <laughs> um, could share a little bit about like, what was that transition like joining this school community? Um, and we could also touch on a little bit about like, if you joined as a junior or you had a friend who joined as a junior or a sophomore and what that was kind of like. Well, I'm the only, I have two sisters and I'm the only one who's been in a private education and a boarding school. Um, so, you know, it was hard to leave home, but, you know, the community, the dorm parents, um, you know, everyone in my dorm, you know, I got really close with pretty quick. Um, that's one thing they really want to, um, you know, make sure you make those connections in the dorm so you don't feel alone when you come here, um, especially teachers, all that. Um so for me, I think it was um, a really great transition. And there was a con on the wilderness orientation. I came back from that, you know, having people to go to, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner with and people who I was in the same sports with. So, um, you know, they make it pretty seamless and easy. Going yeah, off. Can... Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Jane. I'm also a first time like someone in my family, I'm the middle child. I have an older brother, but he goes to an all boys school. That's like 20 minutes away from my house. But um, I don't live as far as some people like Lyle, but it's only an hour and a half drive. My parents come up and watch all of my, or most of my games whenever they can. But also going off of the question that, is it harder for like a junior to come in instead of a freshman? And definitely it's obvious every freshman is new to the school. So you all have something in common, like you're all new. But um, the whole community, like the whole student community is so excited to meet new people. Like end of spring term, like if you ask someone what, they're, someone what they're looking forward to, it's always meeting new people. And like it just brings like the um, vibe, I guess, of the fall term like up because like everyone's so excited to meet new people, no matter the grade you're in. Like as a junior now, we only on, we only had what, like 15, maybe less new people this year. But even though we only had like 15 new people it made a deeper connection because like we reached out to those people and those people are in your classes and with sports too, like any, any grade, like you, it doesn't matter what grade you come in. And I'm going to jump in quick and we should include orientation, right? So maybe someone can talk about orientation. I love this question. <laughs> um, orientation, I think is like the, the most one of the more unique Proctor um, experiences, you know, whether you're jumping in as a new senior, as a junior, you know, coming in as a freshman, um, you go through orientation, which is a five day, four night 
backpacking trip through New Hampshire's beautiful White Mountains. And, you know, you're filtering water, you're cooking on solo stoves, you're doing a bear hang, you're sleeping under tarp tents. And it's like, you know, you're in this harder, more challenging type two fun situation with a bunch of new people and um, teachers, you know, they could be your soccer coach, they could be your teacher, they could be your dorm parent, they could be your orientation leader. And you're forming these really deep um, connections with um, a lot of with like a group of girls, a group of guys, um, a group of people. And um, I did orientation my freshman year and I liked it so much that I led, I was a student leader for um, my sophomore year and junior year and I love it so much. It's like, I know Hunter likes to fish. I'm, guess, I'm guessing on orientation, you're catching fresh fish. You're summoning 6,000 footers and I just think it's a really awesome, unique Proctor experience. And then playing off that, um, you know, there are just a lot of experiences happening here on a day-to-day -day basis and um, certainly clubs, right? So there's a question about clubs and just wondering, maybe a few of you could share just about clubs that you're involved with or things that you've done kind of outside of the everything else that happens. So I'm in PBN, which is Proctor Broadcasting Network. We meet Tuesdays um, and Thursdays after sports. Uh, from now we do, um, but basically you can live stream the games and watch them. But for me, I like to commentate the games. So if there's like a football game going on, uh, you can put on the headset and you can just talk and you can be yourself. Um, but I think it's a good opportunity for people who want to get into broadcasting uh, in the future to express themselves that way. Uh, it's really helped me a lot because I feel like that's something that I want to take forward with my life because, um, but yeah, I think, I think it's a really good opportunity that not many other schools have, uh, at least my other school didn't have this, but Proctor, uh, Proctor is great for it. Yeah, I'm a member of the student activities club. So we, last spring we met during, um, like Fridays during lunch. And we would just like go over um, weekend love, which is like our weekend like list of all the activities that we have planned to do. We plan activities. We bring the community together to like all like be together over the weekend. E even if like we plan dances together or just like little things that are happening throughout the week. And yeah, that's a great way to get involved with um, the student community as well. Okay, I think that was good because I, I do want to ask like one final question and um, to give you guys time to answer, but uh, there were some questions about the admissions process. And I just want to say, um, you know, Proctor uses the SAO, which is the standard application online, and it's super user friendly and it allows you to apply to multiple schools. Um, so you fill out one app and you can submit to multiple schools. Um, there was some questions about scholarship and Proctor does a need-based financial aid. So um, as you go through that process, there is an option um, to apply for financial aid as well. And then that kind of carries through to, you know, really our admissions office. And we're, we're just, we're trying to help families find the right fit. If it's Proctor, great, right? If you discover that maybe Proctor is not the perfect fit, that's okay too. Um, we're really in this together. Um, so, you know, looking to make sure that kids are in good academic standing, they're kind, they're nice, they're motivated, they're excited about this opportunity. Um, those are really the things that we look for, um, you know, weighing heavy, heavily on like teacher recommendations. Um, it's less about, you know, what a student might score on the SSAT, um, which is why we don't require it anymore, um, really coming off of COVID. So, um, you know, if someone does take the SSAT, you know, I think it's good for your student or your child um, just to kind of see where they test and um, helps kind of set the stage for, you know, the looming tests that are before them with SAT um, and other things, but it's not something that's mandatory at Proctor and it doesn't really give anyone an advantage. Um, but I just wanted to talk about that quick, not to take away from the kids, but so just the end, I think um, maybe you guys could go around and just share like your favorite class, 
or like a memorable moment in your class or a teacher that just like you just love, right? Um, but I'll let you guys do that. And then that should bring us to eight o'clock and we'll we'll try to stop then. Yeah, so one of my classes is Athletes and Lit with Mel. And I'm like a big sports guy and I love sports so much. And this class was like perfect for me. And so the other week we had a conversation like, you know, everyone gets to talk and it's graded, but this conversation was about like uh, Steph Curry. And I was like, Bren, that's like the perfect class for me. So I think that like each class is set and based off of like what you're interested in. And especially as you become more of an upperclassman, there's more like you can uh, pick the classes that you take. And so the more like generic ones necessarily, but this athletes in the class is definitely perfect for my interests. So I think that people can find different classes that are set for their interests um, more. Yeah. I can touch um, on a class I took last year, which was screenwriting. Um, being involved in theater, it kind of appealed to me, but also I've always been a STEM oriented, orientated person. And so I've always kind of struggled with writing a little bit. And that was until, of course, I tried creative writing um, with screenwriting. And it was so much fun. It ended up being my favorite class. I wrote a, the first act of a really funny screenplay that we had to read aloud in our, I think it was like a five person class. So um, that was really amazing as well. Um, and yeah, so we have a lot of different opportunities for different sort of niche interests at Proctor or, you know, trying something brand new, um, like Thomas said. Um, and this year I'm taking honors neuroscience, which is an absolute, like it's in more in my sort of um, interest area, but um, I have to say that neuroscience is one of the most amazing classes we have here. And I've learned so much um, and Buzz Morrison is an amazing teacher. So that's another one of the really cool classes and slash opportunities we have here. You should take Buzz's class. <laughs> um, going off of what Lyle said, trying something new. Um, I just stepped into the ceramic studio this fall. And um, I've, I've normally consider myself more an athlete, but you know, I've been, I've dabbled in studio art where um, you know, it's fall and you go outside and you're doing oil painting and you're practicing with pastels. And, um, but now I'm in the ceramic studio and, you know, you're practicing throwing clay and you have to be really patient. And, um, I think it's, you know, as, uh, I'm taking it, I'm learning more and more and I really, really like it. Yeah. I agree with Jane. The ceramic studio is awesome, but, um, you know, I really enjoyed all the hands-on classes, whether it's ceramics or, you know, studio art or um, like I took honors chemistry sophomore year or physics. It's like you get to, you know, play with fire, um, you know, you get to throw stuff in physics. Um, so I think all the hands-on classes are really, really fun. Yeah, going off of what Rowan said, I'm also a very hands-on learner and the sciences at Proctor are insane. Like they are very much hands-on. They really help you understand like the understanding of science, taking biology, freshman year, chemistry, sophomore year, and now AP environmental science. I'm like leading into the path of what kind of science I like really, really enjoy. And only having two, three weeks of environmental science now, I'm already learning so much about the environment and it's honestly just such an awesome like hands-on learning experience and it's so much fun too. I guess I'm I'm last year and I, I think it was beneficial I mean probably my favorite class I've taken is last year I took honors chemistry and I really struggled I didn't do very well but I really enjoyed it and I, I learned a lot I really liked that the class the atmosphere and the kids and the teacher and I kind of, I think I learned a lot through struggling in that class and I'm happy I took it. Um, That's great. And we are at eight o'clock. Unbelievable. And I just want to say thank you to like, you know, all the families that joined us tonight and really a huge thank you to our Proctor students. Like they gave up their free time to do this with you all. And 
Um, it's actually really special for me too, because I love hearing from you guys. Um, but thank you. I uh, hope you can join more events as we kind of move through the fall. Um, and uh, yeah, have a great night. Go Proctor. You gotta hold that up, right? <laughs>